That is overly generous. Thanks, band. You guys are awesome. You make anybody seem awesome up here, even me. Uh, you guys, thanks everybody for coming. It is an honor. It is uh, uh, an emotional thing to be in, in my last uh, NCMR as the CEO of Free Press. And I really appreciate that you've all you know, made the time to get out here and, and be part of this. It means so much to me and everybody else. And Bob uh, deserves every bit as much of credit as anyone else for, for Free Press. Let's give it up for Bob Michesny. But I have to say, um, as I leave Free Press, my deepest gratitude goes to one of the greatest unsung heroes of this movement. She's one of the best nonprofit uh, COOs in the nation, and for the last uh, nine years, I have been what's regarded as her uh, professional spouse. It's a role that I will likely miss the most. Uh, she's a powerhouse. She's the one who knows how to really build and run an organization. I want to give a huge shout out to Kimberly Longy. Thank you for being the best partner I could ever have. Kimberly, where are you? We love you, Kimberly. This is quite a moment. Most of us have been here for a few days. We've been in a lot of panels. You've been talked at a lot, so I'm going to be brief tonight. It's, I'm going to tell you a quick tale about two cities, or in this case, it's really about two issues. Uh, and they're the closest siblings in politics. McChesney kind of uh, got my punchline a bit, but it's still, uh, I, and therefore, I'm going to add a few words about a hobbit. <laughs> no, really, a hobbit. Now, Larry Lessig said it brilliantly last night. Larry is not the hobbit. He's the professor who talked about money and politics. But after 40 years of methodical and well-organized organizing and financing, the largest corporations and the wealthiest Americans have achieved near complete control of political discourse and policy making in America. This is not just my opinion, it's a fact. Their maze of think tanks, PR groups, attack groups, fake grassroots organizations, lobbyists, campaign contributions to corrupted politicians are obscured by a weak and often complicit fourth estate. Together, these forces block meaningful progress on nearly every issue we care about, from the environment to education to economic and social justice. As Senator Durbin said of the big bankers, during the failed fight for comprehensive reform after the financial crisis, these folks own the place, talking about Congress. The concentration of wealth in America has grown to a disparity not seen since the 1920s. The holdings of the top 400 wealthiest Americans exceeds that of the bottom 50% of the American people. It is not sustainable. But when we challenge unchecked corporate power, our opponents smear us as Marxists and they red bait us. They call us socialist. They call us anti-corporate. When we simply asked for the most basic protections against unfettered corporate greed. Remember this, if we don't take on the corporate political machine and refuse to be marginalized, our nation will be overrun with even more poverty more financial meltdowns, more environmental disasters, more sick people without access to health care, and a media system with even less hard-hitting journalism, fewer independent voices, and more corporate censors with names like AT&T and Comcast. As I leave free press and the best job I've ever had, I ask you to hold on to this idea. The political crisis we face is not about liberals versus conservatives. It is not about Democrats versus Republicans. It's about the largest corporations and the super rich manipulating public opinion and crafting laws that maximize their profits at the expense of a sustainable and informed society. They manipulate they cajole some conservatives and right-wing media to propagandize, exploit wedge issues, and promote a false left-right divide. Their strategy discredits critics, confuses, and polarizes the American people to staggering effect. Their bear-baiting compels the public to fight each other 
instead of collectively taking on the real problem. You remember that epic Lord of the Rings movie? That ring had awesome power. It was compelling. With it, you could save or destroy the entire world. For corporate titans, with their puppets in Washington, fortunately, none of them here. Here tonight, we have the few heroes in Washington who give us cause for hope. They, these are the two rings that they must keep, that the corporate titans must keep. One is political money and the profound influence that it buys. The other is the media and the ability to ensure that propaganda continues to trump facts and that sensationalism trumps substance. These are the closest siblings in politics. These are the two issues that will determine whether our great democratic experiment lives or dies. These are the two rings that we must reclaim with the same courage and singular focus as a hobbit named Frodo. And we must do so knowing that so many ordinary people who call themselves liberal or conservative are facing the same adversary. Even if they don't always know it, we must be compassionate as we change hearts and minds. You are among a small but growing number of people who have the power to take back the ring. You have the power to overcome the rational cynicism that the current political moment elicits with the humility and understanding that this struggle transcends generations. That we may have many years, perhaps decades, before we prevail in the never-ending fight between greed and justice. As Supreme Court Justice Lewis Brandeis once said, most of the things worth doing in the world had been declared impossible before they were done. So I leave Free Press in the skillful hands of Craig Aaron and Kimberly Longy and a fantastic staff and board of directors. I will lead a new organization called the Democracy Fund. It will aggressively challenge corporate power in government across issues. I will help make that issue a major political force in America. The other side, it is the other side of the same coin that we have worked on together for the past decade. And as I look at you, as I look at this movement, the great organizations, the activists, the leaders within it, I can only hope that a little of this magic, a little of your magic comes with me. Thanks.